he felt so much lighter now, as if a great weight had been lifted from his shoulders. He decided then and there that Ash was special, and that he would do everything in his power to make him great. Lucario would be Ash's mentor just like Sir Aaron was his. He would teach him everything he would need to know to be great. Everything about aura, Pokemon, survival skills and everything in between. He swore it to himself. Now that that's settled, Delia said as she clapped her hands. How about some breakfast? Her son nodded brightly. His stomach suddenly rumbled loudly, causing Ash to blush. Delia giggled and got up to make breakfast. Even Lucario chuckled at him. Hey, Lucario, Ash said, gaining the aura Pokemon's attention. He reached over the table towards Lucario with his hand open for a handshake. Friends. Lucario's lips twitched into a smile as he reached over and shook Ash's hand with his own spiked paw. Friends. Ash's soft smile did wonders to light up Lucario's spirits even more. The second piece of the puzzle fell into place. Ash Ketchum, age 9. Johto Region, Alto Mare. Beautiful, a certain 9-year-old mused as he stared at the horizon. In the distance, the water city of Alto Mare slowly but surely became visible as the cruise liner Ash was currently on came closer and closer to the waterlocked city. The sun rose in the distance, bathing the city and the ocean in a warm orange glow. The day had just started. He was on the deck, leaning on the railing as he looked off into the distance. Are you excited, sweetie? Delia asked her child from the side as she leaned on the railing as well. Her hair whipped around in the strong wind and her smile was bright enough to shine. Of course I am. Alto Mare is famous for its guardians, the legendary Pokemon Latias and Latios. With my luck I might just run into them. And even if I don't get to see them the city itself is more than worth the trip. Ash cried excitedly. Delia giggled. She absolutely adored her child's excitable nature. You're right. With your luck you might just run into them. The most improbable things always seem to happen around you. Like the time when we ran into that herd of Nidoran. And instead of chasing us of like their nature should have demanded you had them playing with you in mere moments. Ash smiled in remembrance. The memories his mother had just called up were very fun. They had been visiting Vermilion City and when they had been wandering through the grasslands surrounding the city they had run into a huge herd of Nidoran, headed by a Patriarch Nidoking and Matriarch Nidoking. Before things could have turned sour Ash had taken out his leaf whistle and had played Oracion, calming down the Patriarch and Matriarch and quieting down their herd. After that it was a simple matter of manipulating his aura to convey his friendliness to the herd in order to gain their trust. He had the playful Nidoran eating out of his palm in moments. They loved to play and Ash was more than willing to play with them. Ash's smile turned into a grin as he thought of Lucario, who had taught him in the ways of the Aura Guardian. He absent-mindedly tugged at the Pokeball that was attached to a simple silver chain that hung around his neck, the one that held his teacher and closest friend. Shortly after going home with them Lucario had found out about Pokeballs and their uses in the modern world. While initially weary of the device he had to admit that it was a very convenient way of taking Pokemon with you. Lucario, knowing how much his student traveled with his mother and unwilling to be separated from him for long periods of times, seeing that traveling around with them out in the open might lead to sticky situations in the current world, had procured a Pokeball from Professor Oak and had handed it to Ash. After explaining his reasoning to the child, he had let himself be captured by his student. Ash was now officially a trainer, but he didn't consider himself a true trainer. A real trainer had to actually train their Pokemon. With Lucario, the situation was reversed. The Aura Pokemon was training Ash. Lucario himself was such an advanced Pokemon that Ash, while having learned a lot about Pokemon in the last year from Lucario, was unable to help him in sharpening his own skills. Lucario was still training himself, of course, and was slowly growing stronger. It was actually a scary thought to Ash. Lucario was strong the moment they had met, amazingly so. Professor Oak, who was the only person besides Delia and Ash who knew of Lucario, had tested the Aura Pokemon in battle shortly after they had first met with his own battle-hardened Pokemon. Elite level, that was how strong Professor Oak had rated Lucario. Considering that elite level Pokemon were considered only a little bit weaker than Pokemon from, 
let's say, the Elite Four, that was saying something. Ash blinked as his mother called for his attention. Get your stuff, sweetie. We will be docking soon. I want to check into our hotel and start exploring the city as fast as possible. Ash nodded excitedly and ran down the deck towards their cabin. He entered and promptly started to pack his stuff back into his backpack. Not having a lot of stuff to pack he was done within 10 minutes and quickly left to rejoin his mother, who had already gathered all her own stuff the night before. He rejoined his mother at the railing. Ash smiled as he spotted Alto Mare again. The city of water was far closer now, close enough that he could make out some of its architecture and structures. It was indeed very beautiful. Alto Mare was a very nice and peaceful looking island city, Ash noted from a single glance. The mass of canals leading into the city proper were bound to make things fun when they entered. He couldn't wait to start exploring it with his mother and Lucario. Ash reminded himself to release the jackal-like Pokemon at the first possible opportunity. It didn't take long for the cruise liner to arrive at Alto Mare's main port. The ship quickly anchored itself to the dock and people started moving towards the ramps to disembark. Ash noted as they walked that several ships were already anchored in the harbor. Hundreds of people were moving around the place, loading and unloading the boats or embarking and disembarking, depending on the function of the vessel. We have arrived at the island city of Alto Mare, the ship's captain informed everyone over the ship's speakers rather unnecessarily. All passenger may now take the ramp down to the city. They waited a bit for the crowd to dissipate along the boarding ramp, seeing as the number of people descending was big and they didn't want to deal with the crowd. As the crowd lessened, Ash and his mother quickly disembarked and walked onto the port. The duo quickly left the uncomfortably crowded port behind, arriving at an adjacent canal where they took a gondola into the city and towards their hotel. Ash whistled in awe as he observed in the city's beautiful architecture. The city's canals and ancient history combined made it one of the most beautiful places he had ever seen. Delia looked around, equally as awed by the city of water. She took out a camera and started making pictures of everything that caught her interests. Hey, what's that? Ash asked as he pointed towards two pillars that rose out over a low-built house in the distance. He could see statues on top of the pillars, depicting what appeared to be Pokemon. He had an inkling of which Pokemon they represented. Those statues depict the guardians of Alto Mare, Latias and Latios, the man guiding the gondola answered, confirming Ash's thoughts. Legend has it that they watch over our city and protect us in case of danger. Are they just statues or do they really exist? Delia wanted to know. I sure would love to meet the real ones, Ash commented with a big grin. Me too, the guide said. We've never really seen them, though. Because everything is always so peaceful around here. There was never any need for them to protect us. If this city has always been so peaceful, then why does it need two legendary Pokemon to protect it in the first place? Ash asked, his face scrunched up in confusion. Because. The guide fell silent, blinking in confusion as he had no answer. I've got no clue to be honest, the man admitted. Look, there's our hotel. Delia said as she pointed into the distance towards a pretty large three-story building with a small plaza in front of it that separated it from the canal. The guide quickly steered the gondola towards it. After thanking and paying the guide Ash and Delia entered their hotel. The duo walked up to the reception area, counting themselves lucky that they were the only ones checking in at the moment. Hello, how can I help you? The pretty brown-haired receptionist asked cheerily as the mother and son approached. We would like to check in, please, Delia said brightly. The names are Delia and Ash Ketchum. The receptionist nodded and punched in some commands into her computer, looking up the necessary data. A couple of seconds later she smiled and nodded to herself. Then she took out a key from underneath her desk and handed it to Delia. Room number 12 is where you'll be staying. It's on the second floor. Please, enjoy your stay, she said kindly. Delia nodded her thanks and headed for their room, Ash trailing behind her. The duo quickly found their room and entered. Both were pleasantly surprised by the room's lavish interior. There were several large, soft-looking beds in the comfortable room and the room was beautifully decorated in an old, but comfy style. Niece, Ash whistled in appreciation. Let's unpack and then head out, Mom. I can hardly wait. 
Of course, honey, Delia said, smiling. The two quickly unpacked and chose the bed that they would be sleeping in for the night. Delia quickly went into the small attached bathroom. Ash sat down on his bed. He grinned and yanked the pokeball from the chain around his neck. Come on out, Lucario, he said and released the aura Pokemon in front of him with the push of a button. In a flash of white light Lucario appeared kneeling in front of Ash. Said Pokemon grinned and stood upright. Ash stood as well and gave his mentor a small bow. The jackal-like Pokemon returned the gesture and smiled at his student. Well, Ash, what will we be doing today? Lucario questioned, his aura voice echoing in the room. We're going to explore Alto Mare, of course. Ash answered, grinning. You can stay out of your Pokeball in the city. I saw many people keep their Pokemon outside of their Pokeball on the way here. Really? That's great. Lucario said, his good mood soaring. While he had nothing against being inside a Pokeball, as a matter of fact, he found it rather comfortable, but he enjoyed being out and about with his student. Anything in particular you want to see? Lucario asked curiously. Besides the legendary Pokemon Latias and Latios. Just the city itself, the Alto Mare Museum and Alto Mare's main square, Ash answered. Sounds fun, Lucario commented. He grinned from ear to ear. When are we heading out? As soon as mom is finished unpacking, Ash said. Which can wait, till tomorrow, Delia said as she returned from the bathroom. She grinned at her surprised son. Let's go dear, or do you want to wait? Hell no. Ash said and quickly ran out the door. Delia and Lucario followed behind, their eyes dancing in mirth. Man that was fun. Ash's excited shout rang out over the Alto Mare's main square where, coincidentally, a town celebration was being held in honor of the legendary Pokemon Latias and Latios. His shout drew a few odd looks from the surrounding people, but he had long since learned to ignore them. Some of those looks lingered on Lucario, who was right besides Ash, since most people didn't recognize what kind of Pokemon Lucario was. It was amusing, Lucario admitted, referring to the carnival-like ride he had just ridden. Delia came walking up to them, having come back from a stall where they sold cotton candy. She had two sticks of the delicious cotton candy. One she handed to Ash and the other she kept to herself. She knew that Lucario didn't like sweets. Thanks mom. Ash took the cotton candy gratefully. He nodded towards his mother in appreciation and took a bite from it. Lucario wrinkled his nose at it, but kept his opinion to himself. My pleasure, sweetie, Delia said and smiled at her son. She took a bite from her own cotton candy and looked around. The elaborately decorated city square was packed to seams with people. I think we've done everything worth doing here, she commented while taking another bite from her cotton candy. It's getting late. Let's head towards the museum before it closes. Awesome, I've heard a lot of great stuff about it, Ash said and followed his mother. They quickly left the city's main square behind and came to another canal where a guide with a gondola was already waiting for them. Said guide gave Lucario a strange look, but shrugged it off, thinking that Lucario was just some exotic Pokemon. A ten-minute trip in the gondola later and finishing their cotton candy, the trio found themselves in front of Alto Mare's famous museum. After paying the guide for his services the group quickly headed towards their destination. Ash looked from side to side and noted that they had just passed in between two ornate pillars that framed the approach to the museum. He looked back at the museum and was surprised at its appearance. It looks more like a palace than a museum, he mused. Delia nodded. True, it's not something you would expect to find in a city like this. Lucario smiled. What are we waiting for? Let's head in, he said and walked forwards. Delia and Ash followed. Shortly after entering the museum the trio split up and went their separate ways, heading into the direction they thought they would find the most interesting things. All three of them, Ood, and Odd. Over the sculptures, tapestries, ancient texts, statues and paintings they encountered on their way through the museum. Lucario received strange looks from everyone in the museum, but he ignored them and continued to enjoy the unique sights. One portly older man, a curator at the museum, looked curiously at Lucario and decided to follow him around for a bit. Ash, Delia and Lucario met up again at the very back of the museum right near an antechamber that held the most important objects in the museum, 
the DMA and the fossilized bones of an aerodactyl and kabutops. They paused in surprise as they spotted something surprising down on the ground. They looked down towards the two fossilized skeletons of long-dead ancient Pokémon embedded into the museum's marble floor. Wow, cool. Pokémon fossils, Ash said, looking down in awe. They sure are, the portly elderly man said as he boldly walked up to the group. It's also a reminder of our past. These fossils are of Pokémon that once terrorized Alto Mare. One was an aerodactyl and the other was a kabutops, Delia interrupted, guessing. That's right, the elderly man nodded in confirmation. Come, have a look over here. The man led the group towards the end of the chamber and up a short flight of stairs, where a strange machine was situated. This is called the DMA. The defense mechanism of Alto Mare. And what is this defense mechanism of Alto Mare? Ash asked with a raised eyebrow. The old curator launched into an ancient and well-rehearsed tale. His voice echoed in the antechamber as he spoke. Long ago, the Aerodactyl and Kabutops were taught by an evil trainer to attack people, so everyone lived in fear until Latios came and brought water to the city, drowning the evil Pokémon and turning our streets into canals. That's when the city was named Alto Mare, which means, High Sea. That was also when they built the DMA. They wanted to make sure that no one would disrupt their peace ever again. Fortunately, we've never had to use it. Lucario whistled in appreciation. Good forethought. I have to say that I'm pleasantly surprised. The curator's head snapped towards Lucario, his eyes nearly popping out of his skull as he beheld a Pokemon capable of human speech. Said Pokemon rolled his eyes. He was very much accustomed to people looking to him like that by now. The first that had looked at him with such bafflement was Professor Oak, and after that pretty much any person who had witnessed him using his aura voice had done the same. Why you can talk? The curator stuttered. Yes, is there a problem with that? Lucario asked dryly. No, it's just very, very surprising, that's all, the curator said, gathering his wits quickly. Oh, don't mind Lucario. He just enjoys shocking people, Ash said, smiling. Lucario's brow twitched in annoyance. It's all right. I like shocking people too, mainly with the wonders of Alto Mare. I'm Lorenzo by the way, Lorenzo introduced himself. I'm Ash. Ash Ketchum, the Aura Guardian trainee returned the gesture. And I'm Delia, the mother said with a smile and a nod. Call me Lucario, the ancient Pokemon returned. Grandfather. A girl around Ash's age walked up to Lorenzo. She was a bit taller than Ash and had brown hair in a peculiar hairstyle, which was partially covered by a white barrette. She shot Ash, Delia and Lucario in particular inquisitive looks, but shook her head and focused on Lorenzo. I thought I would find you here. Did you forget our plans for today? You're late for the picnic, the girl chided. Lorenzo blinked in surprise before his eyes widened in remembrance. Oh. Sorry, Bianca. I must have completely lost track of time. Bianca shook her head at her grandfather. Obviously. Are you coming now? Lorenzo nodded, of course, of course. He turned towards Ash and the rest. I'm sorry, but I have to go now. Maybe I'll see you three again later. Goodbye. The three returned the goodbye and watched as the grandfather left together with his granddaughter. You know, grandfather. Maybe you're getting too old to work at the museum, considering just how much you're forgetting lately. You should start thinking about retirement, Bianca said mischievously, as she and Lorenzo walked away from the museum. Lorenzo gave a big, rumbling belly laugh at the suggestion. No way. I like it too much. Besides, I'd go stir crazy within a month. You can only spend so much time making gondolas before it starts to wear on you. No, my dear Bianca. I will be working at the museum until the day I die, Lorenzo said passionately. Bianca smiled. I was expecting that, the girl admitted. She quickly changed topics. We better hurry. Latios was getting impatient when I left to go look for you. Lorenzo chuckled. Then better make haste before Latios eats all our food. He paused as he thought of something. And what about Latias? I'm having a hard time imaging that she was being the patient one this time around. Bianca blinked at the question. Her brow furrowed as she thought of the Red Eon Dragon and what Latias was doing the moment she had left the secret garden. She came to a startling conclusion. 
Um, now that I think about it, I don't remember Latius being there. Lorenzo facepalmed. She snuck off on her own again, he muttered, annoyed. I swear, no matter how many times Latios and I tell her to be more careful and that she should never go off alone without telling anyone, she never listens. Bianca shrugged, unconcerned. It wouldn't be the first time that has happened, and nothing bad has ever come of it. I don't see what you have to be so worried about. Lorenzo sighed. You just don't understand. If anyone saw her, he trailed him, looking into the distance with a worried gaze. Bianca rolled her eyes, if Latias ever got in trouble she would just use sight share with Latios and he would come and save her in a heartbeat. Lorenzo gave her a deadpan gaze as they rounded a corner into a small side alley. You're forgetting that Latios has no battle experience whatsoever. Latias and Latios might be legendary Pokemon and they have a lot of power at their fingertips, but no way to use it in any fashion. They lack the experience and training, the old curator countered. Bianca snorted. And you're forgetting that Latias can make herself invisible and take on a human disguise at will. She would be hard-pressed to get into trouble if people are unable to see her or her real self in the first place. Lorenzo sighed again. All right, all right. Let's not argue about this. All that's important right now is that we inform Latios and find Latias. Bianca nodded in agreement as the pair turned another corner, disappearing into another dark alley. The two continued walking and took many turns into the small and narrow alleyways of Alto Mare, leaving the hustle and bustle of the water city behind. After some time they came to what appeared to be a dead end. A brick wall blocked their path at the end of the final alley, but both continued on walking, not even pausing. Without breaking stride Bianca and Lorenzo walked up to the wall and passed straight through it, the illusionary wall rippling like water as they passed through. They came out on the other side and stepped into one of the greatest secrets of Alto Mare, the secret garden. The home of the guardians of Alto Mare, Latias and Latios, and the resting place of the Sol Du. Both the grandfather and granddaughter looked around with nostalgic smiles. They both had great memories of this place. The secret garden was a very beautiful place. It's an incredibly large place surrounded by a stone wall, and has many fountains made of brick and contains grassy fields, all sorts of flowers, ponds, natural and man-made trees of varying sizes, from small to incredibly huge, and essentially looks like a Venetian garden. Light filtered through the green canopy of the garden, throwing shades and blots of light everywhere, highlighting the beauty of everything. Bianca and Lorenzo's eyes were drawn away from the beautiful scenery, as the blue streamlined draconian figure of Latios approached them. Latios smiled and cooed in greeting as he approached his longtime friends. Hey Latios, Bianca greeted and walked forwards to pet the Eon Dragon. Lorenzo chuckled as Latios gave another coup in delight. Latios, do you know where Latias is? Bianca told me that she didn't remember seeing her when she left, Lorenzo said, turning abruptly serious. Latios paused as he pondered the question. The last time he saw his sisters was moments after they had finished setting everything up for their picnic and he had laid down on the soft grass, waiting till everyone was there for the picnic. The Eon Dragon's eyes darkened and his brow started to twitch in annoyance as he realized that his sister must have slipped off on her own, again. Lorenzo chuckled ruefully. I thought so, he muttered. Well, would please call her. We're all hungry. Latios threw off his annoyance and nodded. Concentrating, the Eon Dragon called on the bond that he shared with his sister in order to make a mental connection with her. As he was just about to call her, Latios's scarlet-eyed gaze widened and he swore loudly, which just sounded like a particularly loud coup to Bianca and Lorenzo. Without waiting to explain Latios turned on a dime and shot away with the titanic speed his species was known for. He flew to the edge of the secret garden and without losing any speed dove into one of the secret waterways lining it, taking a shortcut in order to reach Latias as fast as possible. Within less than a second, he was gone. Quote dot dot dot. I guess something is not quite right, Bianca muttered. Lorenzo facepalmed again. Well, dear. The sun is starting to go down. Maybe it's time to go back to the hotel, Delia said as she put the last spoonful of ice cream sundae in her mouth. She, Ash, and Lucario were sitting at a table outside a nice little restaurant called the Grey Cloister, right beside a narrow canal. 
they had decided on having a late night dinner there and had just finished their deserts. I don't know. I'm not really tired yet and it didn't look like there was much to do back at the hotel. Ash said from his place across from her, a bit of a disappointed whine to his voice. Delia chuckled at her son. I'm rather tired myself, dear. How about you, Lucario? Lucario frowned. I'm not tired yet either. If we go back now I'll probably have trouble sleeping, he admitted. He was a very active Pokemon, after all, and without his daily training regimen to tire him out he simply wasn't tired yet. Delia nodded. All right then. I'll go back to the hotel and you two can continue to explore the city, she said, surprising both Ash and Lucario. Delia shot Lucario a hard look. And you better keep an eye on my son, Lucario. If something happens to him I'll skin you alive, she threatened. Far from intimidated Lucario raised his paw and bowed lightly from his seated position. Your wish is my command, he said theatrically. Be back at the hotel before 10, okay. Here's some money to pay for a gondola or two, Delia said seriously as she handed Ash a small wad of money which he quickly stuffed into his pocket. Ash laughed. He was surprised by his mother's decision, but he understood why she took it. Thanks to Lucario's teachings he could defend himself pretty well and with Lucario there, a very powerful Pokemon that watched over him, his mother probably felt secure in letting him go out on his own. Besides, he would be leaving home within a year. Delia probably figured that he was ready to go out without her. All righty then, Delia said and clapped her hands. She signaled for a waiter and asked for the bill. The waiter gave Lucario a look, but shrugged it off and gave Delia the bill. Said mother paid it and they quickly left. Delia said her goodbyes and wished them a fun time before turning around and departing, leaving Lucario and Ash behind on the sidewalk. Ash and Lucario watched her walk away until they lost her in the crowd. Well, what do you want to do now? Lucario asked as he turned to look at his student. Hmm, Ash hummed as he pondered the question. Why not just wander around for a bit? I'm sure we'll find something interesting to do eventually. I guess, it's not like I have a better idea, the aura Pokemon admitted with a shrug and started walking. Ash quickly caught up with him. Eventually, after 10 minutes of aimless wandering through the streets of Alto Mare, Ash and Lucario found themselves in a small empty square that was tucked away in some easily missed part of the city. The cobblestone ground of the square was lined by waterways and large thick trees that came close to blocking out the sun with their thick canopies. The surrounding buildings even had statues and carvings built into them. In the very center of this was a small wooden bench. Both Ash's and Lucario's eyes narrowed as they noticed something. They were being watched. On some unspoken agreement teacher and student moved towards the bench and took a seat, discreetly looking around as they did so. They saw no one, but their aura senses were practically screaming at them that something was close by. The two made small talk as they focused their aura, concentrating on the presence. It was there, to their left, and was floating in the air. It was invisible and could make itself float. Evidently a Pokemon then. Both could sense great power from it, but it was wild and untamed, as if its wielder was extremely inexperienced and wasn't capable of harnessing it. That was good, both mused. They also felt that the being that was watching them was merely curious. There were no bad intentions, merely curiosity. While this made both Ash and Lucario relax a bit, the being was still watching them, spying on them. They didn't like to be spied on. As the two continued their facade of relaxation the presence, came closer, apparently secure enough in its invisibility to risk getting close enough that merely an outstretched arm would be enough to touch it. Which was exactly what happened. Both Ash and Lucario suddenly shot out their right arm and grabbed the presence, their fingers clenching around the two arm-like protrusions of the invisible Pokemon. The presence squealed in surprise and dropped its invisibility, revealing itself as its concentration broke. Ash and Lucario blinked in shock and surprise as they realized just what they were grasping. The red streamlined draconian figure of Latius looked back at them, her eyes wide with shock as her two stubby red arms were clenched tightly in the pair's grip. Ah. Uh, Ash was shocked. This was the last thing he had been expecting. Hi, he said rather lamely. Why are you spying on us? Lucario's eyes narrowed at the shocked speechless legendary. 
He had nothing but respect for the mighty beings that administered and protected the world, but legendary or not he didn't like to be spied on. He wanted an answer and he would get one. Latias's golden eyes darted around nervously and her mouth moved but no sound came out. She gathered herself and spoke. Her poke speech was nothing more than a series of high-pitched squeaks and squeals, but Ash was perfectly able to understand it. His aura automatically translated poke speech into ordinary English, a skill that Lucario had taught him at the beginning of their partnership. Ah, uh, sorry. I didn't mean to intrude. I was just curious about your friend. I know about every single Pokemon in the area but I've never seen a Pokemon like him before, Latias said. She glanced down at her arms. Could you let me go, please? I promise not to run off. Ash and Lucario glanced at one another. Coming to a decision they released Latias, who drew back a little but didn't take off. Lucario crossed his arms again and Ash raised an eyebrow at the legendary dragon. This was the first time he had ever seen a legendary Pokemon and he tried to take in every detail of the Eon Pokemon. Latias blushed at the scrutiny. She wasn't used to being looked at so intently. And now then, Lucario suddenly spooked up, still scrutinizing Latias closely. Could you, could you please not tell anyone about this? Latias requested hesitantly. She looked at them nervously. If people hear about another sighting even more people will come streaming in, trying to find my brother and I. The last time I got spotted I was scolded so bad. Your brother? Ash wondered. Latias winced at her slip up. Yeah, my brother, Latios, Latias confirmed, seeing no reason to hide something that they would probably be able to figure out on their own anyway. It would probably be better if I left now. If my brother saw me talking to you. Too. Late. Latios' voice was heard in the square, his tone cold. Latias squawked as her brother appeared behind her, erupting up from one of the waterways in a spray of water. Latios glared at them and floated closer, his deep red eyes boring holes into Ash and Lucario. Be brother. Latias stuttered. Any further words from her got cut of as her brother shot her a stone-cold look. The blue eon dragon turned his attention back to Ash and Lucario and growled audibly. What? Ash frowned at the apparent hostility of Latios. While he was odd at seeing another legendary dragon he was very disconcerted by Latios' behavior. They had done nothing to warrant it, after all. Lucario frowned at Latios and tensed, ready to move at a moment's notice. If things turned sour he would strike Latios down. Latios simply growled at them in reply. You will speak of this to no one, Latios snapped out. He huffed audibly. If you do. Well, it will be far from pleasant. Lucario's eyes narrowed at the threat. If you threaten me or my student again, Latios, I will teach you a lesson. I do not take kindly to being threatened, especially when we have done nothing to warrant it. The Eon Dragon smirked back in turn. And what will you do? I am a legendary Pokemon. What hope do you have to defeat me yo? He got cut off by a deep audible chuckle, which came not from Lucario, but from Ash. What's so funny? Latios snapped. Ash's eyes glittered with amusement. Your empty threats, that's what's so funny. You aren't able to fool us, Latios. You may have a lot of power, but it's wild and untamed. We can sense it. You aren't trained in its use. Any well-trained Pokemon can take you out, Latios. Another chuckle. Lucario would crush you, type disadvantage or not. Latios' claws tightened into fists and he gave another growl, far louder than before. Unfortunately, he knew that the child was right. He could feel Lucario's restrained power. It was vast and honed to a razor's edge, just waiting to be unleashed. He knew that the strange Pokemon, Lucario, would crush him and his sister easily. What do you want? Latios bit out. Who said we wanted anything? Ash countered. Of course you want something. Latios snapped back. His brow twitched in annoyance. What do you want in order to ensure your silence? Ask and I will deliver, within reason, of course. Ash frowned deeply and glanced at Lucario, who had a similar expression on his face. Latias' eyes constantly switched between Ash, Lucario, and Latios, unsure of what to do or what to think. Ash, I think I have an idea to prove that we're trustworthy to them, Lucario said, causing Latios' eyes to narrow. Latias looked at him, curious about his remark. Remember what I taught you last month? Yeah. But how is that going to oh, 
I see, Ash smiled as he realized what Lucario was planning. What are you ta? Latios began to demand, but got cut of his ashes and Lucario's palm suddenly snapped up without warning and pointed at him and his sister. He blinked and suddenly two aura spheres had formed in front of his face. Jerking back, Latios was about to scream a warning to his sister until the aura spheres suddenly grew immensely in size. The aura spheres continued growing and fused together, growing until they completely enveloped Latios and his sister. Inside the immense aura sphere Latios and Latias looked around warily. The inside of the aura sphere was a maelstrom of energy. White and blue energy surged around them, cutting off their view of the outside world. Strangely, they weren't being hurt by being inside the attack. Suddenly, images began assaulting their mind. It was similar to their sight share where they would show the other what they were seeing by making a mental connection over their bond, only except of sharing sight, Ash and Lucario were sharing their memories with them. They saw a small boy growing up, traveling alongside his mother as they visited places all around the world. They felt his determination, his iron will to be the very best. They understood his compassionate nature, Ash's natural inclination to help other people in need. Then, they saw a Pokemon unlike any other be picked up by a hero, who trained him up to be a powerful warrior. They felt his hate and despair at his master's apparent betrayal, and his self-loathing when he realized the truth. They understood Lucario's dedication to Ash and his vow to make Sir Aaron proud. They saw and they understood. The last image was of Ash and Lucario shaking each other's hand and their declaration of friendship, which was now set in stone. Without warning the energy around the Eon Dragons disappeared, as Ash and Lucario dismissed the technique. There was a moment of silence. Latios and Latias were looking wide-eyed at Ash and Lucario, almost not believing what had just happened. Latios swallowed hard and Latias shook her head in astonishment. That was. Latios was unable to find the words to describe his feelings. Yeah, Latias said in agreement with Latios. She felt exactly the same way. Do you trust us now? Ash questioned, his gaze switching between Latios and Latias. Yes, Latios answered curtly. How could they not? They had just witnessed what made Ash and Lucario who they were. The two had shared secrets so profound that they made up the building blocks of their personalities and their motivations. It was one of the greatest acts of trust the two Eon Dragons had ever seen. That thought just brought more questions. Why did they do it? Latias hadn't even realized that she had voiced the question when Lucario answered. It was a simple logical decision, really, he said nonchalantly. It was the only way I could think of that had any real chance of earning your trust. Besides, all legendary Pokemon such as yourselves are noted for being honorable and wise beings. My student and I felt secure in sharing a few of our secrets with you in order to break the ice, so to speak. I see, Latios murmured. There was another moment of silence where both sides were unsure of what to do. Suddenly, Latias perked up as an idea came to her. She smiled as she made the suggestion. Hey, brother. Latios turned towards his sister with an inquisitive stare. Maybe we should invite them over. It'll be fun. Latios paused at his sister's suggestion. He knew that he could trust Ash and Lucario with their secret just as much as he could trust Bianca and Lorenzo, but it was hard to make that jump so swiftly. After a moment of deliberation he smiled and nodded. Of course, sis. As long as they promise keep the existence of the secret garden to themselves, I will allow it. Latias squealed in joy and nuzzled Latios' slender neck in thanks. Ah, uh, sorry to interrupt, but what is the secret garden? Ash questioned, breaking up the moment. Latios' eyes focused on Ash as he answered. The secret garden is our home. As the name suggests, it's a secret place hidden deep in Alto Mare. The only way to reach it is through a set of secret waterways that only Pokemon can traverse and secret passages obscured by powerful illusions. You can only find your way there if someone shows you the way. He frowned as he realized something. Hey, wait a moment. You have been understanding me, perfectly, this entire time. How are you doing that? Ash blinked. It's a skill that Lucario taught me. I'm his student in the ways of the aura. With the right training, Aura can automatically translate the natural speech of any Pokemon. Latios and Latias looked curious at that. 
they had a bit of knowledge on aura and what it was but weren't entirely aware of what the mysterious energy was capable of. I would love to see your home, Lucario suddenly said. His scarlet eyes glimmered in curiosity. He wondered what the home of legendary Pokemon looked like. Latios nodded and smiled. Just follow me. I assume you can still sense me even if I'm invisible since you managed to detect my sister. At their nods the Eon Pokemon turned his eyes towards his sister. Sis, would you go on ahead and warn Bianca and Lorenzo that we are bringing guests? They might get spooked if we suddenly bring strangers to the garden. Latias nodded and with one final nuzzle to Latios' neck she turned and blasted away. She dove into the waterway from which Latios had emerged earlier and quickly followed it back to the secret garden, leaving her brother alone with Ash and Lucario. Latios gave them one last smile before using his feathers to reflect the light around him, effectively making himself invisible. Ash and Lucario stood up and followed Latios as he led them away, leaving the tiny square behind and once again setting foot in the streets of Alto Mare. It was getting late and less and less people were out on the streets. Nevertheless, Latios levitated up high, making sure that no one could accidentally bump into him. How surprising, Ash mused as they dutifully followed the Eon legendary. How big were the chances of actually meet them? Lucario chuckled. Not very big, but then again, it is you we are talking about. The most unlikely things always seem to happen around you, Ash. Ash shook his head as Latios led them into a small side alley. I've stopped trying to find out why that always happens. I just take it as it comes. At least it's never boring around me. Lucario nodded in agreement. He blinked in surprise as they came to a dead end, a plain brick wall blocking the path forwards. Latios dropped his invisibility, appearing in a shower of sparkles. The Eon Dragon chuckled at their expressions, winked at them, and rocketed through the illusionary wall, making it ripple like water. Quote dot dot dot. Did he just? Ash was too shocked for words. So this is what he meant by powerful illusions, Lucario mused. He tugged at Ash's sleeve to get him moving. Let's go. I want to see this. Nodding, Ash stepped forwards and passed the illusionary barrier together with Lucario. The sight on the other side made their breaths get stuck in their throats. Do you like it? Latios asked them as they stepped through. He looked faintly amused as he took in the odd expressions on their faces. Welcome to my and my sister's home, the secret garden of Alto Mare. It's incredible. Ash breathed, looking at the beautiful scenery. Lucario nodded in mute agreement. I'm glad you like it, Latios said with a chuckle. Come, I want to introduce you to a couple of friends of mine. Once again, Ash and Lucario followed Latios, all the while taking in everything the secret garden had to offer. Both human and Pokemon wondered how this incredible place could have been hidden for so long. Sooner or later people should have noticed that a gigantic chunk of the city was missing, hidden behind powerful illusions or not. It's you. An elderly voice boomed out over the secret garden, disturbing the butterfree up in the trees and making them scatter in panic. It also broke Ash and Lucario from their reverie. Their eyes were drawn towards the voice. They blinked in surprise as they took in the portly figure of Lorenzo and the petite form of Bianca. Latios cocked his head, surprised that Lorenzo already knew their guests and levitated towards them. He nodded at them in greeting as he beckoned Ash and Lucario over. They acquiesced and walked over. Lorenzo and Bianca studied them, suspicion ripe in their eyes. Well, this is surprising, Ash mused. He took one look at Lorenzo and Bianca and immediately felt on edge. You don't trust us, do you? He deadpanned. In a word, no, Lorenzo said as he studied him and Lucario like a hawk. But since Latios brought you here, I am willing to give you the benefit of the doubt. We've already met but I'll introduce myself and my granddaughter again anyway. I'm Lorenzo and this is my granddaughter, Bianca. Bianca hesitantly greeted them. Hello, it's nice to meet you. Ash smiled. Well met, Bianca. Lucario looked around before his scarlet eyes focused on something behind Bianca and Lorenzo. What's Latius doing? Bianca, Lorenzo, and Latios blinked in confusion at the question. Latius appeared in a shower of sparkles behind Lorenzo and Bianca, smiling mischievously. Latios' eyes widened as he tried to warn his friends, but he was too late. Boo! 
Latias screamed into Bianca's and Lorenzo's ears. Ah. Both jumped up, startled. They bolted around, looking in wide-eyed panic at the now cackling Latias as they grasped at their rapidly beating hearts. So not funny. Bianca screeched, pointing accusingly at the still cackling Latias. Ash started snickering before breaking down in a deep, rumbling belly laugh. He nearly fell over in hysteria. Lucario chuckled loudly at the scene even as he tried to hide his amused smile behind his palm. The fact that he was shaking with laughter didn't help him covering it up. Latios tried to look sternly at his sister, but eventually succumbed to his own amusement and started laughing as well. Bianca and Lorenzo looked annoyed when they finally calmed down from their scare, but after a few moments they joined in on the laughter. While it might not have been Latias' intention to do so, her action had broken the tension, leaving a friendly atmosphere behind. That's my sister, all right, Latios commented, amused. Always playing and never serious. You don't say, Ash said, snickering. Lorenzo took a deep breath before facing Ash and Lucario. Well, now that that's behind us, will you be joining us? We were about to have picnic until Latias disappeared on us, again. Lorenzo paused as he turned to glare at the sheepish Latias. We have more than enough food for the six of us. I appreciate the offer, Lucario began. But I'm afraid my student and I have to decline. We've just eaten, you see. Would it be all right if we explore the garden for a bit while you have your picnic? Lorenzo turned to look at Latios for his opinion. Said Eon Dragon nodded his agreement. Lorenzo shrugged. It's fine by me and Latios agrees. Knock yourself out, he said as he gestured to the beautiful surroundings. Thank you, Ash said and immediately took off running. Lucario shook his head in bemusement and quickly followed his over-eager student. Quote dot dot dot. Can we trust them? Lorenzo asked as soon as their guests had disappeared from sight. Bianca turned her serious eyes over to Latios. Latias smiled at Lorenzo's protectiveness. Latios stared deeply into Lorenzo's eyes and nodded resolutely, trying to convey just how much he trusted their new friends. All right, Latios. I trust your judgment, Lorenzo said gravely before lightening up. Well, let's stop this useless talk and enjoy ourselves, he announced as he made a beeline for their already set up picnic. Latios, Latias, and Bianca chuckled in unison and followed the elderly curator. Ash and Lucario wandered all over the secret garden, taking in all the sights. From the beautiful architecture, to the waterways, to the splendor of nature and of course the scores of Pokemon that called the secret garden home. The duo had found themselves entranced by the garden's beauty. This place is incredible, Ash breathed in awe. Lucario nodded in agreement. It is. The only place that I can compare to it is the inner sanctum of the Tree of Beginning, the Aura Pokemon said. Both student and master froze in their steps as their aura senses picked something up. Something strong, something vast and something undeniably ancient. A vast reservoir of energy was at the very center of the secret garden, beckoning them, calling for them. Are you feeling that? Ash asked, his voice a mere whisper as he tried to take in the presence. Yes, Lucario answered curtly as he started walking into the direction he could feel the presence in. Ash immediately followed him. It didn't take them long to reach the center of the secret garden, where, to their surprise, an ornately decorated fountain rested. The air surrounding them was saturated with ambient aura, its source rooted in the fountain. The duo walked up to it, holding their breaths as they took in more and more of the power. Vast didn't even begin to describe what they were feeling right now. As they walked up the steps leading to the fountain the two noticed that water streamed down from the fountain into four interconnected waterways that branched out through the garden. From there it went beyond into the city, as if the fountain was feeding the city its water. Both found this curious but didn't dwell on it further. They walked up to edge of the fountain and looked down into its waters, spotting something surprising. In the very center of the fountain was a jewel, but it was unlike any jewel the two had ever seen. The jewel was a deep aqua blue in hue and had white light dancing within. It was huge in comparison with most jewels and an otherworldly light danced inside of it, sending small beams of light everywhere. Ash and Lucario peered down curiously at it. The strange jewel was the source of the immense amount of energy that they were feeling, which they just realized was an extremely concentrated form of aura. It diffused all out over the secret garden, 
particularly into the waterways and presumably out into the canals of the city. Very, very curious, the mentor mused. I wonder what kind of jewel this is. It's radiating aura by the bucket load, far more than any living being can produce naturally. It's flowing freely, yet it is guided into the waterways and into the city. How strange. Aura is not supposed to act this way. What's so strange about it? Ash questioned curiously. It's an inanimate object, which means that the flow of the aura can't be obstructed by flesh and blood like what happens in all living beings. Without those blockages the aura flows freely and into the nearest source of matter, which in this case is water. Lucario frowned. You're right, Ash. But you're forgetting that inanimate objects can't normally radiate aura. It's the energy of life. Something that isn't alive, in a sense, can't have aura unless a large amount of it is imbued into it by an aura guardian. And even then it would be impossible to have an object of inanimate material give off this much aura and to such a continuous degree. He shot his student a contemplating look. And what does that tell you? Ash pondered the question for a moment. His eyes widened as he figured it out. That means that whatever this jewel is, it isn't an inanimate object. An inanimate object would never be able to do this. It has to contain life for it function. He said in realization. Lucario nodded, pleased. Before he could congratulate his student at his swift reasoning, he was interrupted. You are correct, a voice said from behind them. Latios approached them from behind, his demure and slightly sad gaze centered on the duo. That jewel, known as the Soul Dew, contains the soul of Latios. My and my sister's father, to be exact. How's that possible? Ash questioned as he turned to regard Latios curiously. His eyes widened as he realized something. Wait a minute, you said that the soul do contains the soul of Alatios. It's the one that saved Alto Mare all those years ago, isn't it? It was more a statement than a question, but Latios nodded in confirmation anyway. Ash noticed from the corner of his eyes that Latias had joined them, but she was oddly subdued. She shot sad glances at the soul do now and then. Correct again. My father sacrificed himself to save Alto Mare and brought the sea to its shores, seeding the island with life and giving the city its livelihood, Latios said, smiling sadly. He also made the secret garden and the illusions that guard it in order to provide my sister and me with a safe place for us to grow up in. In honor of our father we protect Alto Mare and his legacy. That's quite the tale, Lucario said. He glanced over his shoulder at the soul do, a question burning in his eyes. So your father is in the soul do and is effectively shackled to the mortal realm because of it, unable to move on to the afterlife. Why have you never tried to free him? Latios grimaced. It's more complicated than that. Father's life energy, which you call aura, is the only thing that keeps the sea surrounding Alto Mare in place. If we were to destroy the soul do or even remove it from its resting place for too long the water will retreat from Alto Mare. That isn't the worst part, though. After that the water will come back as a tsunami, destroying the city. That's something we cannot allow. That's why my sister and I guard this place, to protect the soul do. I see, Lucario remained silent for a short while, pondered something. And you have never tried to communicate with him. I mean, his soul's right there. Latios shot the aura Pokemon an annoyed look. Of course we've tried. He snapped. We've tried to contact his soul with our psychic abilities more times than I care to count, but we've always failed to make a connection. Making a mental connection with our father's soul using psychic abilities has proven to be impossible. And that gave Ash an idea. Without warning the nine-year-old turned around in a swift flowing motion and stepped up to the edge of the fountain. Before anyone could react his right hand swept into the water and firmly grasped the soul dew. With nary a pause he channeled his aura into it and, to his delight, could feel it take hold as he made a connection to the soul within. Hello. The soul inside the soul do started at the sudden intrusion. Ash was uncertain just what kind of emotion he could feel from the spirit. Was it shock, awe, incredulousness or a combination of all three he wondered. Hello. Came the hesitant reply back, as if the father Latios was uncertain if the voice that he had just heard was real or not. My name is Ash. And you are. Ash asked, as if he was talking to someone whom he had just met on the street and not like he was speaking to someone who was technically dead. I'm Latios. 
There was a brief pause. How are you speaking to me? He asked. Ash could easily hear the barely restrained excitement and glee in the ancient Eon Dragon's voice. I made a connection with your soul using my aura, Ash answered curtly. He was aware of Latios and Latias when they darted towards him, probably to try and stop him from doing whatever he was doing. They grasped his shoulders and were about to yank him away until. You're an aura guardian, the father Latios asked curiously. Both Latias and Latios froze. The moment they had grasped Ash they had been included in the connection that he had made. They didn't recognize the voice, but something about it made them relax and feel safe. Lucario chose to let things proceed as they were for the moment. There was no malice in either Latias or Latios' actions. So he felt secure in letting them close to his student. Besides, he was curious as to what would happen. Ash was acutely aware of the two Pokemon grasping his shoulders. He also knew that they were now listening in on the conversation. He had nothing against it, after all, it was their father he was talking with. They had the right to hear him speak. I'm an aura guardian in training, Ash corrected. He smiled as he continued on. I'm only nine years old after all. Way too young to be a real aura guardian. Is that so? The father Latios mused, ignorant of the fact that his son and daughter were now listening in on the conversation. The sound of his voice made their eyes widen and their breaths quickened. Both were very much aware of who Ash was speaking with. You must be quite talented to be able to make a connection with me at nine years old, the elder Latios said. He fell silent for a moment, a question that had been burning in the back of his mind finally demanded to be asked and his patience had worn thin. Where are my children? Latias and Latios. Are they safe? Are they healthy? Are they happy? You must tell me. He demanded. You can ask them yourself, Ash said, a happy twinkle to his eyes. He could feel a surge of emotions from the father Latios. They have been listening in on our conversation since almost the beginning. You mean, F father, Latios stuttered, interrupting his father, who fell silent at hearing his son's voice for the first time. Daddy, Latias whispered as tears of joy gathered in her eyes. They heard a deep intake of breath over the connection when Latias made her presence known. Dot dot dot. My darling precious children. You have no idea how happy I am to hear your voices, Father Latios whispered. They could practically hear the tears of joy in his eyes. How? Dot how are you too? Are you happy? Are you healthy? Yes, Father. We're happy and healthy as can be, Latios whispered back in response. Daddy, Latias said, her voice full of hope. How is this possible? How are we talking to you? The father Latios took a deep breath before answering. It's thanks to Ash that we are talking right now. The soul do is the compressed form of my soul, which is made from my life force, better known as aura. Ash here is a practitioner in the ways of aura, which allowed him to directly connect his own consciousness to my own. And when you touched him you two were included in the connection. Does that mean we can only talk with each other when Ash is here to make a connection? Latias asked hesitantly. Only being able to talk with her father for a brief period of time and then being cut off from him again. That would be too cruel for words to her. I'm afraid so, my dear. Unless another person capable of using aura resides in the city, which is highly unlikely. We will only be able to talk so long as Ash holds the connection for us, Father Latios said sadly. That might not be entirely true, Ash cut in. All the attention snapped towards him. He grinned tightly. Latios, your physical form is pure concentrated aura. I am an aura user, which means that I can manipulate aura in its most basic form. With the right skills I can, modify your soul do. I'm thinking of either allowing your soul to leave the soul do as you please or make it possible for your children to connect with you by simply touching the soul do, or maybe even both. What do you say? There was a brief stunned silence at his suggestion. Latias and Latios looked sharply at Ash. Tampering with the soul do might prove dangerous. It provided Alto Mare with its lifeblood after all. On the other hand, if he could do it, if Ash could allow their father to be a part of their lives, then they felt that they had to at least try. Consequences be damned. Lucario raised an eyebrow at Ash's suggestion. He hadn't heard the entirety of the conversation but he could guess the gist of it. What Ash was proposing was entirely possible, he knew. And he knew that it was well within Ash's skill range to do it. 
it would be a true test over his mastery of aura. Lucario smiled. He loved testing his student. Besides, he reckoned that if something went wrong he could step in and correct the damage himself. If you want to try, Ash, go right ahead, Lucario called out to his student. Ash nodded in acknowledgement, pleased that his mentor had enough faith in him to allow him to try this. Ash felt the father Latio steal himself over the connection. Do it, he hissed. Let me be with my children again. Do it. He nodded, closed his eyes and concentrated. An almost invisible pulse of energy erupted from Ash. It traveled down the length of his arm and joined with Soul Dew, causing it to light up, sending beams of blue light everywhere. Ash's brow furrowed as he concentrated, a blue light emanating from behind his closed eyelids. As more and more of his aura sunk into the soul dew the more and more light it began to project. Eventually, the jewel disappeared behind a bright halo of energy that formed a sphere of blue light around the soul dew. Ash gritted his teeth and focused his mind to the max as he started to modify the soul dew. The blue halo of energy started to sink into the soul dew as Ash began to realign the inner structure of the jewel, changing its properties and makeup. After 10 minutes of painstaking work and mental exertion, Ash finished the modification, allowing the last bits of the needed aura to sink into the soul dew and become one with it. Ash released the soul dew and stumbled back in exhaustion. He took a deep breath and centered himself. After cracking his neck he peered down into the fountain to admire his handiwork. The soul dew appeared mostly unchanged except that it appeared a bit thicker than before and that the light emanating from it was quite a bit brighter. Did it work? Latios questioned anxiously. Ash dimly realized that Latios and Latios were still tightly grasping his shoulders. Their claws dug into his skin as they anxiously held onto him. Of course, he began saying, but got cut off when the soul dew flashed white, nearly blinding them with its intensity. The water of the fountain suddenly burned bright white, obscuring the soul dew from sight again. Deep burning red eyes became visible in the sea of white and a ghostly draconian figure slowly emerged from the water, floating up out of the bright white mass. For the first time in over a century, the soul of Father Latios was free. Father, son, and daughter locked gazes with each other for the first time and in spite of the fact that Father Latios was merely a soul his eyes still projected the sheer happiness that he felt at seeing his children. Latias and Latios let go of Ash's shoulders and slowly floated over to their father. Tears gathered in their eyes as they nuzzled their parent. Father Latios nuzzled back, basking in the presence of his children. My dear, dear children, Father Latios whispered. Ghost-like tears streamed down his see-through face. I'm here now, and I'm never letting you go again. Latias and Latios were crying themselves and this solemn vow only increased their tears of happiness. Lucario grabbed the shoulder of the positively beaming Ash and started tugging him away. Come on, Ash. I think these three need some time alone. Ash nodded and followed his mentor, leaving the newly reunited family alone. Ash had never been more proud of himself, or happier for someone else. It was half an hour later when Latias, Latios, and their father once again approached them, having finished, catching up, for the moment. They now found themselves relaxing on the side of a large pond. Lucario was deep in meditation while he sat in a cross-legged position and Ash was laying back against a solitary tree. His arms were crossed behind his head with his eyes closed. So, finally run out of tears, huh? Ash said with an impish grin, still not opening his eyes. All three eons smiled brightly at him. Lucario cracked open an eye and watched them curiously. Ash got up from his position and approached the Eons. I don't know how to thank you enough Ash, Latios said. What you have given us, it can never be repaid. You have my eternal thanks Ash, Father Latios said, bowing his head to the nine-year-old. Latios' reaction was a bit more enthusiastic, she promptly glomped Ash, knocking him over and causing him to give a cry of surprise. Ash's eyes widened and he wheezed as Latios pulled him into a rib-shattering hug. He managed to awkwardly return the hug, despite the fact that his arms were essentially crushed. Latias didn't let go of him for another few seconds. Father Latios shook his head, amused by his daughter's antics and his son was rumbling with laughter. Lucario chuckled at the sight. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, she murmured as she nuzzled Ash fiercely. 
Latias let him go after a moment and backed off, allowing Ash to stand up. He stretched and smiled. You don't need to thank me, Ash said, his smile widening. It was my pleasure. Father Latios chuckled. Be that as it may, I still feel that you deserve a small gift in return. Suddenly, Father Latios made eye contact with Ash and his deep red eyes blazed a deep blue. Ash froze as his eyes blazed blue as well. Lucario shot up from his seated position, alarmed, but calmed down as soon as he recognized what Father Latios was doing. A power exchange. A power exchange was exactly what it sounded like. It transferred power from one being to another, simply by making a connection with the recipient and transferring a small amount of the user's essence, soul if you will, over to the one receiving the power. Lucario knew that Father Latios could not increase Ash's aura powers, but he could give him a new one, psychic powers. He smiled, it seemed that his student would have even more options available to him in future conflicts. Ash knew this as well, Lucario having taught him of this, and knew to steady himself as the new power coursed through his veins and settled inside of him in the deepest reaches of his mind suddenly stopped moving, becoming a part of him. The last piece of the puzzle fell into place. Abruptly, Father Latios' eyes stopped blazing blue. The spirit smiled as he finished the power exchange and looked at Ash, impressed that he hadn't fallen over from the strain. His children, who were already aware of what he had planned to give to Ash, also looked impressed. You didn't have to do that, Ash coughed as he recuperated from the experience. No, I didn't have to, but I wanted to, Father Latios said, still smiling. Besides, I have no use for that power anymore and I still have plenty of power remaining anyway. I don't know what to say, Ash said, looking a bit lost. Thank you. It was my pleasure, the elder Latios, intentionally repeated Ash's earlier words. Yeah, you deserve it, Latios said. His sister nodded in agreement. Ash, Lucario walked up to his student. It's getting late. If we want to be back at the hotel in time we have to leave. Ash frowned and gazed at the sky, reading the time from the sun's position. He nodded, it was time to leave. How long will you be staying in Alto Mare? Latias asked Kariasal. Maybe you can come visit again tomorrow. We will be staying for about a week, and of course we will come visit tomorrow, Ash answered, smiling. Good, Father Latios nodded in approval. I will help you along tomorrow with learning how to use your new psychic powers. Ash pouted. Shucks. There goes my vacation. Everybody chuckled at him. Thanks for the help, though, he added gratefully. Ash suddenly looked pensive. Hey, Latios. Both Latios in the clearing perked up. Um, the older one. I know I'm supposed to keep quiet about this, but can I at least tell my mom? I can't really keep secrets from her and I need to explain to her how I suddenly got psychic powers. Father Latios considered this for a moment before smiling and nodding his agreement. Ash sighed in relief. Thanks. No problem. Now, off you go. The kids and I need to think on how we're going to explain this to Bianca and Lorenzo. I have a feeling it's going to be quite complicated, Father Latios said his goodbyes and worries in one breath. His children said their goodbyes as well. Lucario and Ash quickly found themselves back on the streets of Alto Mare, heading towards the nearest gondola that could take them to their hotel. That was fun, Ash said as they walked. I can't wait to go back there tomorrow. It was indeed quite fun, Lucario admitted. And productive too, who would have guessed that you would receive such a gift today? Certainly not me, Ash said. But I'm not complaining. He paused as he considered something. How are we going to explain this to mom? Lucario let out strange mix between Inyan and chuckle. You mean, how are you going to explain this to your mom? I'm going straight to bed. Traitor, Ash hissed, although it lacked any real feelings behind it. The smile on his face also counteracted his words. The rest of the way back to the hotel was shared in companionable silence. The week went by too fast for Ash. They visited the secret garden daily and Delia even accompanied them a couple of times. While Ash trained to use his new powers alongside the Eon Dragons and under the watchful eye of Lucario, Delia would explore the secret garden. She had been absolutely delighted by the scenery and quite liked the legendaries that called the place home. Bianca and Lorenzo had been overjoyed for Latias and Latios when they had found out what Ash had done for them. 
they had thanked him profusely for it and because of it they hadn't even raised a fuss when Ash brought his mother along the next day. He had made a bit of progress in harnessing his new abilities, although it was hard-earned progress. Harnessing psychic powers was harder than he had first envisioned. Contrary to popular belief, the strength of a psychic does not depend on intelligence or knowledge. But is measured by creativity, flexibility, will, and being able to think outside the box, though knowledge does help. Ash was creative, he was flexible, had great will, was more than capable of thinking outside the box and he was plenty knowledgeable thanks to Lucario's teachings, but he had difficulty turning those traits into psychic force. Father Latios had explained to him that the skill would come to him in time. In the meantime he had given Ash certain exercises that would help focus his mind and increase his psychic abilities. It was quite similar to Aura in that way. Aura comes from the soul. When a Pokemon, or in this case a human, uses their aura they draw upon their own strength as a person or being. Aura is quite literally yourself at the deepest level, which is why emotions are tied so strongly to it. And what makes it unique is that every being has one, some similar, some really different. At the moment, Ash, Lucario, and Delia found themselves on the docks of Alto Mare. The ship that would take them back to Kanto was docked behind them. Facing them were Lorenzo, Bianca, Latios in her Bianca disguise, and the invisible forms of Father Latios and Latios, though everyone knew they were there. I can't believe you're leaving already, Bianca laminated sadly. There's nothing to be done about it, Ash shrugged. He was used to this, leaving his friends behind. That's just the way it is. That's true, Lorenzo nodded, smiling sadly at them. That's how things go, I'm afraid. You will come to visit again, won't you? Bianca almost pleaded with them. It hurt to see people she had become such close friends with in such a short amount of time leave so quickly. Of course, Delia assured. I promise that we'll come and visit you again someday. I'm already looking forward to it, Father Latio spoke to them telepathically. Oh, and Ash. Keep on practicing. I'm going to test you when you come back. Ash nodded, determined to prove himself to the ancient eon. I will, I promise, Ash said, looking into the seemingly empty space where he knew the soul of Father Latios resided. Any further words he wanted to say got cut of when their ship gave a loud whistle from its funnel, signaling that it was about to leave. That's our K, he muttered and hefted his backpack. It's been great getting to know you guys. Goodbye, again, he got cut of when Latias, still in her Bianca disguise glomped him and gathered him in a tight hug. Not giving the boy a chance to react she kissed him on the cheek. Ash froze, a stupefied look on his face. Latias stepped back and giggled at the look on his face, or at least made the motion of giggling. In her human disguise she was unable to speak ordinary poke speech and she could not speak human tongue. And since she wasn't able to use telepathy yet she couldn't tell Ash just how much she was going to miss him. At least not by words, but she thought that her actions conveyed her feelings just fine. An atomic blush exploded on Ash's face after a moment of stupefied bewilderment. He averted his eyes from the grinning Latius in disguise, inadvertently catching the eyes of everyone else present. The looks on their faces. His blush deepened a shade or three and spread to cover nearly his entire body. Delia was giggling madly. Lucario was smirking at him. Lorenzo looked amused. Bianca was trying, and failing, to hold back from laughing. And while Ash wasn't able to see Latios and Father Latios' reactions he could practically envision the shocked looks on their faces. Um, guys. I think we need to hurry if we want to make it to the ship in time, Lucario suddenly said, looking a little nervous at possibly missing their ship. Ash didn't need any more prompting than that. He quickly said his goodbyes and bolted towards the ship. Delia and Lucario did the same and quickly followed him, their friends screaming their own farewells at them from behind all the while. It was time to go home. 